Hi, it's Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. I'm going to teach you about real bargains. These are the objects that people like you are finding at thrift stores, antique malls all over the place. Here we go. First one is, can you believe it? This real bargain showed up in a thrift store and was purchased by one of my video callers. I'm on a video call, asked me to appraise an object, shows me this object, and this object is amazing. Here's what it is. It's a green onion blown glass work of art. It's art glass. Who's it by? Are you ready for this? Who's it by? Dale Chihuly. That's who. Dale Chihuly, the, of course, quintessential art glass uh, contemporary artist, very well known, who established what's called the, the Pilchuk Art School outside of Seattle, Washington in 1971. And this particular piece was an anniversary piece from 1996 that was made to raise money for the school. Uh, founded the school in 1971, and this particular piece is so unusual, and it was purchased, in fact, to, of course, raise money for the school. The school has become one of the comprehensive um, art glass education centers in the world. Internationally, it is renowned. And this piece shows up at a thrift store near Seattle, Washington. My client finds it and says, I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I couldn't believe it was sitting on the shelf. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. You bet she couldn't get out of there fast enough. She was like, oh my gosh, I've got to get this piece. I can't believe it's just sitting here on a shelf and nobody noticed it. Nobody noticed that it was signed. Nobody noticed that it was numbered. Nobody noticed that it was actually marked or inscribed also with the school in, in, information, the 25 for the 25th anniversary, a beautiful piece. I've appraised a lot of Dale Chihuly pieces going all the way back into the early 1990s and work with private collectors who have also collected his work. I remember one Dale Chihuly piece that used to be a centerpiece on one of my um, boss's actual dining room tables when I was a private curator. But they're pretty spectacular and this one was a wonderful find, amazing. I was amazed to see it. So I said, what did you pay? She said, I paid $9, I had a 20% off coupon and I used it. Nine bucks, that includes tax with the coupon. What's it worth? $3,000. Original work of art, plain as day, signed. You can connect it to the artist, Dale Chihuly, master work of art glass. Beautiful example. That's a real bargain. My next real bargain will be something that I think a lot of you jewelry lovers will love. I certainly was shocked and happy to see it. This comes from one of my video calls where people, of course, do the video call with me so I can appraise objects. Now, I love jewelry and I'm a person who collects a lot of watches. I like watches. I think watches are wonderful. Watches are interesting. And this is all about a watch. My dad actually was the person who started me collecting watches because he always wanted to make sure we were on time. So he'd give us a watch for lots of occasions. Some really cheap watches, some really great watches, but I like watches just as a collecting category. A lot of people do. Having said that, this particular piece was bought with a bag of other watches. So $35 is what my client paid for a bag full of watches. Some of them were parts, some of them were working, some of them weren't. And this watch was in there too. You probably recognize the Cartier watch. This is the LaDonna Swiss made, the LaDonna model Swiss made watch. And it is in fact a gorgeous example. You can see the Cartier elements. It's the details that you gotta look for. Whether it's a Rolex or a Cartier or a Boulevard or, or a Citizens or whomever, I want you to look at these particular details. The detail on this watch is not only the high quality of the actual materials, but also that Roman numeral X with the Cartier logo in it, as well as the Cartier in the center of the dial itself. It's got blue steel hands, which is typical of Cartier, and on the back it is marked. It's water resistant, it's a beautiful piece. So she buys it within, of course, this bag of $35 for all these different watches. And you've heard about these. You've heard about the blue boxes that they do, that they'll just have a bunch, or jewelry jars, or watch bags. That idea is really that idea of the treasure hunt, which you know I'm the treasure hunting appraiser. But basically, this was one of those things where people are getting very excited about getting a bag full of stuff and going through it and seeing what you find. 
So my client says to me, I wasn't really sure. I wanted to have it checked, so I figured I would call you. And I pointed out some of these aspects of this watch that would indicate to you whether or not you had the real Cartier or one of the knockoffs. You know the knockoff. You know, you're on a, a big uh, city street in a big city. And, you know, they have all these, these watches. And most of them, of course, are, of course, reproductions, knockoffs. Guess what? This wasn't a knockoff, and I was able to appraise it for her. What's it worth? $4,500. A fantastic original Cartier watch, beautiful condition. What did she pay? $35 for the whole bag. So she paid roughly $2 to $3 for this one watch, and it's a real bargain worth $4,500. Wow, wonderful find and a real bargain, too. This next real bargain reminds me of the show Cheers. Do you remember Cheers? Well, here's why. I'm on a video call and this couple says to me, you know, when my husband goes into the thrift store, Dr. Lori, everybody knows him, just like Norm on Cheers. You remember Norm would come into the bar on the TV show Cheers in the 80s and 90s and basically walk in and they all go, Norm! Well, when this guy, my video caller, goes into the thrift store, they all shout his name. <laughs> so he's very well known in his local thrift store, which is cool. Anyway, it's good to know the people at your local thrift store, antique mall, uh, estate sale, whoever it might be, because, you know, those folks might help you out pull something aside for you, or maybe, you know, look for things for you when you're not there. Anyway, so my video caller is on the phone. He says to me, Dr. Lori, I went into one of those aisles I don't normally look down. I went into the ceramic aisle. I looked around because I've been learning a lot about identifying quality. And he's been doing a good job identifying quality, watching my videos, and learning what materials are going to be high quality and relate to high value. Okay, so he said, I like this because I liked the cliff, the castle on the cliff. I like the castle on the cliff in this big plate. Wasn't really sure what this big plate was for. I told him that it was a charger, in fact, and that charger are usually for wall art, or you can put it in the curio cabinet or put it on display. He said, I wasn't really sure about that, but I really liked the painting. I thought it was nice. I thought it was good quality. So I kept looking around and I found another one. And not only one more, which would make two, but he found a third one as well. He said, these two that I found were really exciting to me. So I looked at them and I thought, these are pretty good paintings. They kind of look like the paintings that I've seen, those sort of old master paintings. What's interesting about these are they certainly are good paintings and they're made by a good company. When he turned over the charger, the very large, yeah, it's probably 13 to 16 inches in diameter, right? Plate made of ceramic. He saw the mark Metlock. Metlock is a German company best known for making beer steins. And those particular beer stein pieces are marked in the same way. So he said, well, I had some familiarity and I was able to look this up and find this information, but I couldn't find these kinds of chargers, these big plates. So I figured we'd do a video call with you and you could help us. And yeah, I can help you. So it was wonderful to find out that he actually bought two of them. And then the third one, which was a little bit younger than the two chargers that were showing the castle right on the cliff, these painted ones. Those two were the ones that we focused on because the third one, while it was a Metlock and while it was a nice piece, it was not as valuable and as interesting and as well done as the others. So I explained a little bit about the history of Metlock and explained a little bit about how these particular chargers are very popular in European countries as collectibles, particularly in Germany and other parts of Northern Europe. He said, well, I was really happy to guide them. I thought they were cool. We like them in our home. And I wanted to know what you think of the value. He said, I paid $9.99 for each one of them. So call it 10 bucks for a penny, right? $10 for each one. He bought two, that's $20. What are they worth? 800 bucks for two. So $400 each for a $10 investment each. That's a real bargain too. They were beautifully painted, wonderfully executed, big chargers, and they'll look great on his wall. <laughs> this next real bargain is a piece of jewelry and it also comes from a video call. Now I talk about jewelry a lot and I talk about it because it's one of the best ways resellers are making money with respect to, of course, thrifting and reselling. I want you to think about this. And if you're a collector of jewelry, it's a great collecting category too. So this real bargain comes from the video caller. And this is funny because it's funny to me because living in rural areas, it's kind of hard to get cell service. And sometimes this messes up your whole plan. So 
My video caller said, I got this piece out of something called a blue box. Many of you probably know what a blue box is. At a certain time, usually it's about six o'clock on a Friday evening, um, some of the thrift stores will actually pr produce a box that you could purchase, which is kind of a hodgepodge or treasure chest of, of these boxes full of jewelry or full of other items that in fact you could buy for one price plus shipping. So she at six o'clock at night, she in fact would look on a Friday night to buy her blue box. And this particular blue box would have all different kinds of jewelry in it, not knowing what it could be. It could be little pendants or a bracelet or all different types of jewelry. And that particular blue box would have these items in it and she would go through it and then hopefully she would make her money back. But she had to be quick because the blue boxes sell fast and it's $29 plus $5 shipping. That's what she paid. And at six o'clock on that particular Friday night, she was coming home from going out to dinner. So she's on her way home and she's on her cell phone. Somebody else is driving. Don't worry, somebody else is driving. You're like, oh no, you shouldn't be driving and doing your cell phone. She wasn't. So somebody's driving, she's on her cell phone and she's trying to buy her blue box, but she has spotty cell service out in the boonies wherever she lives and she's basically couldn't get the cell service to work so she's hitting the button and instead of buying two blue boxes for $29 each she bought four of them because she hit the button twice that's happened to me I've done that I hang up on people I pocket dial somebody I got all kinds of issues or I'm putting the button and I buy too many things that happens so she bought four instead of two but she's going to find out that she's going to be very happy that she bought four instead of two. So she pushes the button on her cell phone. She actually gets these boxes and she's hoping that she's going to make her money back because now she's like, wow, I made a bigger investment than I wanted to make. I want to recoup my money. So she goes through, she finds this unusual looking piece and she figures it's a pendant because it has a little bail on it, a little round circular element that would go a chain would go through and she's looking at it and it's round and it has all of these different semi-precious stones in it amethysts and peridot and citrines and garnets and all these different colors and it kind of looks like a spaceship and of course it's very well known in the jewelry circles it's called sputnik and it's named of course for the very famous mid-century modern spaceship the sputnik and this particular piece is marked clearly marked by the way clearly marked look for your marks on the jewelry if they're right there i teach you what they are so watch those jewelry videos it says 750 which is the mark of course for 18 karat gold and the piece is gold and it's got these semi-precious stones going all the way around it these were very popular in the 1960s and, and early 70s, but mainly in the 1950s and 60s into the 70s. And today they are actually what has now become or evolved into those globe pieces. Uh, they look like a little globe of the world and they have all semi-precious stones on it set usually in gold. But this one was a Sputnik. This was one of the original ones from the early 1960s. So she says, Dr. Lori, when I saw this, I thought, I don't know what this is. I better do a video call with Dr. Lori. So I said, okay, so for $29 for one of these boxes, how much stuff was in one of the boxes? She said, well, I don't know, maybe 30 pieces in one of the boxes. All right. So now you've got it for a dollar or less, right, from your blue box. Dr. Lori, what's it worth? It's worth $850. That's a real bargain. Why? 14 karat gold, all the precious metals, and your investment was very low. You should be happy you live in the rural areas and that your cell phone service wasn't so great that day because you got a real bargain. This next real bargain, I bet you all will recognize this particular real bargain, of course, is a wonderful piece and it's a Yadro from Spain. When I was in Barcelona, there were many, many, many shops that had many Yadros throughout much of Spain, particularly um, in places like Barcelona. They're also traded a lot in the Caribbean. You can get good deals on Yadros there too. But in this, in thrift stores, you're gonna be able to find them as well. So I'm, she, my client call does a priority and she's a priority Ask Dr. Lori client. So she sends me images. I look at the photos and I get back to her and I say, well, how did you acquire this? And she says, well, I got this girl with the cat about eight inches 
hand-painted ceramic marked Yadro figurine from Spain. And I got it, in fact, has no damage from a thrift store. And if you look at the bottom, there's no damage, but the thrift store lady used a magic marker to put the price on it of $2. So I paid $2 for it. I thought that was a good deal, and I figured it looks like it's in good shape. I think I'm going to just buy it. A lot of figurines get overlooked because people think, ah, oh, it's just a figurine. Not all figurines are created equal. Just like not all appraisers are created equal, not all figurines are created equal. The Yadro figurines, of course, have those lovely taffy pull or mannerist forms. They're very, very desirable. Lots of people collect them, and because lots of people collect them, the prices are high. She, I said, how much did you pay? She said, I paid what's marked on the bottom. It says $2, $2. What's it worth? 250 bucks. That was a real bargain too. This next real bargain comes from a video call and it is a piece of jewelry that some of you might recognize. This piece was a piece where my client walked into a thrift store and she said, I always find something good at this particular thrift store. I bet you all have those kinds of thrift stores. Thrift stores that you say, oh, you know what? I really like this place. This is where I'm gonna go and I'm gonna keep going there. And that happens. Sometimes they're in the more affluent regions of your area, right, in those neighborhoods. Sometimes they're just the thrift stores that are in a, in a place, a location that's an easy drop off for people to and from work. Sometimes they're in big cities, sometimes they're in sleepy small towns, it just depends. But she said, I always find something good there, so I went and I'm looking and I'm looking. She said, and I, I don't really dress very well when I go. She said, I kind of make sure that I'm not looking my best when I go to that thrift store. I said, okay, well you have your process, it's working for you. And I said, how did you acquire this piece? By, of course, the very famous Tiffany & Company designer, Elsa Peretti. She said, well, she goes, it was just sitting right there. It was just right there out on the counter, minding its own business. No one was even looking at it. She said it was clearly marked sterling silver. It was clearly marked Elsa Peretti with her characteristic signature, which helped us date the piece. It was clearly marked Tiffany & Company, and it also said that it was, of course, sterling silver. So. Wonderful piece, all marked, and it is a very famous image for her, for this designer, and it, of course, is the apple. And you can see that it is basically just a free-form design of an apple. Elsa Peretti is also very well known for a bean, like a kidney bean-shaped form in the same time period, the 70s into the 80s, and uh, after 1974 when she joins Tiffany into the 80s, and the apple, in fact, is a derivation of the bean form. So they kind of did those hand in hand. She became very, very famous for these. So people who know Tiffany and know, of course, the designers like Paloma Picasso, like Elsa Peretti, will in fact recognize this particular necklace. This necklace, she paid, you ready for this? $11 for the sterling silver Tiffany & Company necklace by the famous designer Elsa Peretti. What's it worth? It's a real bargain at $400. Amazing, amazing find, beautiful. And if you look at the links, the chain is actually marked in certain places. You can see all of the marks. How they missed it, I don't know how they miss it, but they're missing lots of real bargains. More real bargains, here's another one from a virtual appraisal event where I hold virtual antique appraisal events where you can have your piece appraised. This person said, Dr. Laurie, I fell in love with this painting when I saw it. I like the colors and I like the scenery. And I said, I like the brush stroke and I can teach you why you'll like the colors. Well, this piece, he said, I didn't care that it was signed. I didn't even notice that it was signed. I didn't know much about the artist. I was just looking at this and I thought, wow, you know, I really like the scenery and I like it. I'll take it home. So he's in his thr the thrift store. He buys the piece. I said, did you look at the back? He said, eh, not really. I want you guys to look at the back. Here's why I want you to look at the back. The back of this painting is called Illustration Board or Artist Board. It's a piece of canvas over a hard board, usually cardboard or a, a, a tougher board, not quite masonite board. It's used oftentimes for artists who are painting in plain air or outdoors directly from a particular subject or scene. It will help you to date the piece. They usually are mid 20th century. They use them as early as the early 1900s, but into the mid 1900s, you're gonna see this board used a lot. And I want you to recognize it, because if you see that from the back, I want you to think about it. It'll help you date the piece. And these are the kinds of tricks and tips I wanna give you so you can find these pieces that are valuable. 
He liked the scenery. He liked the colors. I said, do you recognize the scene? He said, no, I don't. He said, I said, where? He said, where? I said, where do you live? He said, well, I live near on Long Island, New York. I said, okay. I said, this is a piece of, ma of, of work from Rockport, the artist colony at Rockport, Massachusetts. It's a very famous scene, in fact. And the colors are famous for Rockport, too. Why? One reason, a guy named Emil Grupa. Emil Grupa wrote a book called Grupa on Color, and it's all about color theory and how you use color in painting. Became very important, of course, in the 20th century for artists who are learning about, of course, color theory in the American Impressionist style. Notice the quick brush strokes, notice the brush strokes, and notice these little elements of color, like the little blue purple man on the boat right in the middle, like the green against the red. And I have appraised and also curated exhibitions of Mille Grupa and many of the artists of his circle, Alan Freelon and other artists like this artist, who of course is Eugene Dunlap, a California artist, in fact, who is working on in Rockport, Massachusetts for a summer where many artists would go to paint together in this artist colony. My museum exhibitions of uh, Grupa's work and the work of the Rockport artist colony, in fact, really show you a lot about color and beautiful handling of brushstroke. I was impressed that he liked the scene and he liked the color because it talks about color theory and how our eye is attracted to certain things. This is why our eye is attracted to these beautiful colors in this particular painting. It's oil on canvas board. It dates to the middle years of the 1900s. And this particular piece, which he bought at the thrift store for $4, count them four, is worth $1,250 without a frame. The Eugene Dunlop piece, this wonderful example of, of course, color theory in American art is a real bargain too. I'm Dr. Lori, thanks for watching. I hope you find your real bargain real soon.